Hi guys, Simon here. Welcome, any new subscribers. So we're going to do a dark story today. We're going to do Tim the Tramp and his friend, colleague, just somebody who lives in the same building as him and I haven't got a name for him. It is a dark story. So in this story is a mention of HIV, drugs, illegal activity. So I would suggest this is an over 18s video. Never done one of these before. This is a, uh, it happens in every country in the world. But this is about a couple of guys, both English, living in Patea, illegally. No passports, no paperwork, no visas. In Tim's case, just couldn't leave Thailand. Um, so, when I had my bar, when I was managing my first bar in Soy BJ, which is off Walking Street, Walking Street in Patea. So halfway along Walking Street, Escalades on right lane on the other side. Really narrow, narrow street, only about four meters across. Down on the left hand side, halfway down the soy was my bar, and opposite was a little convenience store selling alcohol, cigarettes, household goods. Really small little shop, but it had a table sat outside on the concrete section. Then it's a couple of steps down to the road. That's where Tim used to sit all the time. Tim the Tramp, I'm gonna call him. Tim was in Patea probably three or four years before I got there and got into that manager's job. He'd been married in the UK, got divorced and sold everything, put about five or six thousand pounds together, bought a one-way ticket to Thailand. Don't know if he'd been before, never got that out of him. But he arrived in Patea, lived there for four years, ran out of money, sold his passport, didn't know you could do that. Um, I had a girlfriend, worked in the go-go bar on Walking Street. He shared the room, his room with her, the bottom of that soy and B, soy BJ, with a little couple of short time room hotels. But he had one room full time with his girlfriend. And the other guy I'm gonna talk about had room next to him with his girlfriend. Tim used to sit on the steps opposite my bar and that's how I got chatting. I'd be outside having a cigarette. We were only a few metres apart. He was probably about 40 years old, Tim, but he looked a lot older. Always looked unshaven and as if his hair hadn't washed. He was similar clothes all the time, scruffy. Um, but he lived on those steps drinking. He was not a drug addict. He was in his past and he'd given up. Totally off drugs, but was drinking heavily. His girlfriend was working, she was keeping him. I believe he was up to some activity to make a bit of money, but I'm not sure, because every time any official came at the end of the lane or down, he would be gone. There was a cut through down the lane, which would cut through to Marine Marina Disco, I think it was called. So any sign of officials and he'd be gone and then he'd be back later. Um, nice guy, pleasant to talk to. He was there when I left the bar scene a few years later. He was still there, probably still there to the, today. How he's stayed in there on overstay <coughs> visa, I don't know. <coughs> Here's a warning for you. If your visa runs out, a couple of days, okay. You can go to the airport, pay a fine, you'll get a slap on the wrist. You start overstaying for time, for, you know, weeks. You could get expelled from Thailand and never be let in again. So you don't want to overstay. Don't do it. If you've got problems when you're there, go to immigration and talk to them. So yeah, got, I got to talk to him quite a bit and that was his story. He was didn't want to come back to the UK was surviving somehow without visas and passport, keeping it under the radar, girl helping him. Um, no future. 
couldn't do anything. If he ever got into a health problem or trouble, he would be spotted as no passport or visa. He could get back to the home, he'd just have to go to the embassy, the UK embassy, and they would put him on a plane and sort him out. But he didn't want to, he wanted to stay there. And he had no future. Very sad. But whilst talking to him, this other guy appeared, probably in my first few weeks of that bar in uh, Walking Street. This other guy was an ex-professional snooker or pool, I can't remember player um, and he had gone to Thailand doing competitions or something fallen in love with the country and contracted HIV from a girl um, through sexual activities the girl is was still with him and he'd been there for four or five years, still with him. They'd stuck together. Um, she hadn't done it on purpose. He'd found out and his health started deteriorating. He was um, overstay again, passport gone, illegal, doing something with drugs, something with alcohol. Um, now I didn't know this the bit about the HIV, the drugs and the alcohol, he was quite well dressed, taking care of himself, but he came into the bar when he first opened. And it turns out later he was in the bar the night that the previous owners had got closed down for uh, illegal substances, etc. in the bar. And he told me the story of what happened, etc. Um, so that's how I found out about all that. Previous owners, bar shut down. But he came in and um, he didn't have money, didn't have much money. And he challenged me, I remember on the I think, second or third day I was in the bar, to a game of pool, and if he won, for me to buy him a beer. Oh, now, in those days I was, and I still class myself as a good pool player, good snooker player, but I fancied myself as a pool player, and, and I'd done well in some competitions around Patea. Um, he wiped the floor with me. He was amazing on the pool table, absolutely brilliant. Played him over the coming months so many times. He beat me eight out of 10 times, but I learned so much and he improved my game. So he got a lot of free drinks off me. Um, and I got to know him quite well. But then it's only towards the very end of our friendship before I moved out of that bar that I found out about the HIV his girlfriend had HIV. She was getting treatment because she was a Thai citizen and he was sharing the drugs, the antibiotics and everything that she was on. But his health was deteriorating. Now one week, he was sat talking to Tim sometimes and I'd be sat in front of my bar and I'd talk to them. You know, they were nice guys but both illegal. A week before I moved bar off into Zoe 7. This guy, the pro player, um, got into an altercation at the end of the road by Walking Street. Something happened, I don't know. Police arrested him. Um, and then it was found out that he was no passport, all the rest of it. He got sent to the Hilton Bangkok. So that's the Thai prison um, in Thailand and he never came out he his health was really you know, he was getting thin and his health he was in a bad way last I heard he was still there and but that was 12 years ago the last time I heard anything so he was there still and health bad never came out I fear the worst for him um, his girlfriend, she disappeared uh, a few months later, according to Tim, she moved, but she wasn't good either health. They'd kept themselves to themselves uh, a bit, and they were, don't know what they were doing. But back in 2000, when I was there, 2001, 2002, the HIV thing was 
big news, it was in the news a lot, and there was all sorts of stories going around. So that was the first time I'd heard anything about it really in second hand from somebody who'd got it and did the research as you do. Um, but you don't in the mod in the last ten years I've never heard any stories in Thailand about HIV at all. Um, heard stories of drugs and things, but never heard anything more on the HIV side. Uh, so whether it's been pushed underground or kept quiet or it's getting a lot better um, like most places in the world I don't know but there yeah, those two guys became people I talked to and it showed me that there are foreigners in Thailand that end up there and will not go home that take the decision to finish their time there and then there's the sad side you see in the newspapers where they've gone up to the top floor and things have happened. Very sad. Um, it's 12 years on since I've seen those two guys. I can't imagine Tim still there illegally. And I can't imagine the other guys still around, to be honest. Um, but that's a bit of a dark story. You know, People are asking me, have I ever seen the, the reason for this story is subscribers are saying to me, you know, what's the HIV situation? Well, I don't know. Where and I'm in Thailand, it's usually in the village and there's nothing there. Um, people have asked me about overstays. These two guys have done it for years, but you will end up in, in trouble if you do. It's not worth doing. And if you ever get to the stage where you're there, you fall in love with the country and you're out of money, go to your embassy, talk to them, talk to the immigration Thailand, they'll help you get to the embassy. There's people in Thailand that will help you. They don't want you living on the streets or causing problems. They will help you get back to your own country and hopefully then your country will be able to help you get back on your feet. Um, stay positive. Anything that happens with you and a Thai partner, if it all goes wrong, you can always restart your life. Uh, and get going again. So, a tale from some of the things I've seen. Share the video, please, and subscribe, tell your friends. I will see you on the next video, which will be more upbeat. Thanks for listening. I hope this answered some of your questions. Bye for now.